All right, welcome to part two of the enemy setup. It's got a little bit more complicated than I was expecting it would, but let's go ahead and kind of at least finish this off. So let's open our enemy controller script. And edit a few things on here. Now I'd already accidentally deleted a few things, but you can go ahead and delete the on trigger that we had previously. And the on collision we can we can leave. We're gonna make a few changes to it. In fact, we'll go ahead and finish that off now. And we can even do a debug dot log for testing this out which you could delete later but we could just simply uh, put collided with player so we know the on collision enter is being called and how many times it's being called and then we want to have an if statement we want to look and see if dash from the dash script, we want to see if the is dash damage on is equal to false. And that way, if it is, if dash damage is not on, then we want the on collision. So if the player is colliding with the, the enemy, we want the player to have a change in health. And we're simply going to minus the damage amount that we have variable up above. Save that. Some of that may have been something that we did before and I had to remove some of it. But anyway, so now we have our damage amount. We have enemy health. And I'm going to add in serialized field for audio clip. So later on, we'll want to add in some sound effects so we could do um, hit sound, hit SFX, hit sound effects, whatever you want to name the variable, but just make sure you're consistent with that. And I'm going to copy this as well and put this for explode sound effects. And maybe for these, I'll do a, a capital FX. up to you. All right, so then we have those set. And we're going to want a method for damaging the enemy besides the enemy the player damaging the enemy, the enemy damaging the player, right? But uh this is going to be public so we can call this. And we'll just call it damage enemy and integer whatever the amount is that we want to damage the enemy. And then we're going to simply minus the amount. And we might put a note here if we wanted to do a health bar in the future, um, we put a note we could, you know, use put that here where after we damage the enemy, we want to display that that health. And then I had removed the update, but I'm going to go ahead and add the update method back in. And what we want to do is look and see if the enemy health is greater than, I'm sorry, less than zero. We can create a game object.
that will be an instantiation of the explode effects at the transform dot position and the rotation. So if we didn't want a rotation at all, which there isn't going to be any right now, but if we didn't want a rotation, instead of writing this, we could write quaternion dot identity as well. So then afterwards, uh, we could call the destroy method. We want to destroy this game object, the enemy. And if we want a slight delay or something, we could put uh, a comma and then something like, you know, maybe a quarter of a second type deal. So maybe there's a slight delay. May not really need that. But that could come in handy for using that for certain things later on. See, so this should be instantiating the explode prefab. So this should be the explode prefab. So the only problem that we're going to have later on, we're going to need to change this, is this is update, so it runs every frame. So literally, when the enemy's health is less than uh, or equal to zero, it's going to continually instantiate the the explode prefab so it's going to keep instantiating it um, during that time frame until the enemy is destroyed so I think what we'll do for now is just delete uh, that time frame so that way the enemy's destroyed the objects destroyed so it won't keep instantiating so we'll save that and we need one more, we can put this up above, doesn't really matter, but we need one more method that we're gonna use to call, and that's gonna be a public method because we're gonna call this, and this is going to be reset trigger off. So we may wanna call this to get this game, this game object, the enemy. So what we could literally do is just say this, which then we could do dot get component and you can see here if you type this up you can actually check and see so if you just do this, right, it's referring to this. You'll see that sometimes, uh, but we could also just say game object as well. Say, hey, this game object dot get component dot box collider, and that's a method. And then we'll get the is trigger variable, the Boolean variable, and we're going to set that to false when this is called. So we want to say, hey, turn the trigger off so that the collider is back on. So that way we can be able to collide with it. So we'll save this. Our enemy is set up here. We can select, select our tester object. And we have to assign a particle system for the hit effects and the explosion effects, which we're going to be going over soon. Uh, for now, you could literally just take your sparkles and drag that into both of them until we create the hit effects and the explosion effects. But that is, that's currently what I'm using so far for this. So right now, if we play test, it's not all going to work. We don't have all the, the code working, but we can dash into it and collide. And you can see the is trigger is wigging out. So if I'm leaned up against it, the is trigger keeps going on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. So let's go into our scripts and we'll grab our 
player movement. We double check the enemy. So we have box collider is trigger is off. And we've got this set up. Okay. Now for our player movement. We want to go ahead and get our dash third person script. So we'll create a variable for it. And then in our start, we're going to do the same thing. We'll just call this dash. And whenever we use this variable, we want it to get the component dash third person. And we'll end this method. wanted to check that one more time so this the enemies is trigger is going on and on and off and I think I forgot something so let's check our dash script and there we go okay so we do have on collision enter and on collision exit that is throwing a little bit of a fit that's what we had before so we want to delete that and save this so our dash is only running the dash in this cooldown since we're not actually stopping and playing particles unless if you set that up we're not actually doing that so I'm just gonna get rid of that save this let's look at our player movement no on trigger stuff or player controller And our enemy controller only has on collision enter and it's only changing the health. So let's go ahead. Oop. Make sure you save all of your scripts. Play test real quick to see. Okay. So if we are right next to it, the is trigger is not wigging out. <laughs> That's good. All right, so now we'll go into our player movement script. And in our player movement script, we're going to write an on trigger method, but currently our player only has one sphere collider that we have at, uh, I put mine around, let's put it at 0.8, and we'll kind of zoom in here so you can see. But this collider is going to be our is trigger for actually triggering things. Actually, let's make that uh, 0.7 for right now. And then we're going to need to have another one. So we're going to go ahead and copy component and paste component. And it'll put it down at the bottom. And we could just drag this up. And we got to do the prefabs first because we created a prefab. So we're going to do overrides apply to all. And then we can go into our prefab mode. And now with our prefab selected, we can bring this up to the top. Got to really be patient with this. Okay, so our first one we duplicated this our first one we're going to turn the is trigger off and we're going to actually set this to say 0 0.6 0 0.6 there we go so that way it'll be inside maybe uh, 0.5 is the same height yes yeah, so we'll do 0 0.6 and 
There we go. So we're having two colliders in here for our player. So one will be the is trigger for triggering things to be able to call the on trigger method. And the other sphere collider will just be for collisions. So we can minimize those now. And because in our prefab, you can't set these in right now because it won't let us get anything because we're in prefab mode and our canvas is not a prefab, which is fine. We can just come out of, uh, let's save our changes because I have auto save off. But if you exit out easily, they, you have auto save on and it's saved. Now we look back here, player controller, our, our text is all lined up. Everything's good. And if you don't have a rigid body, the default character controller, even though it uses gravity and all that, uh, we need a rigid body in order to use on trigger and on collision. So we're just going to add the rigid body. And if you haven't done so, and you want to turn off use gravity since we already have that inside of the character controller. And then the constraints, you have a drop down here with the arrow. You're going to freeze rotation for the X, Y, and Z. Freeze those. That way the uh, player's like little goggle shape doesn't roll around and wig out. So we'll save this. And then open our script back up. And... We can put this after the move player. So we're going to do void on trigger enter. So on trigger enter, whatever enters the trigger area of the player, we want to know, is it the enemy? So we'll say if, if other game object, we want to compare the tag, look at the tag and see, hey, is this the... Uh, enemy tag which you have to have created the tag like we did in the previous video and assign it to the enemy then okay if this object is an enemy then we want to have this other object and get component what component are we getting? Well, it's the enemy, so we'll get enemy controller. Now, we we want to assign this to a variable that we can use instead of continually saying um, other because we're getting the enemy controller script that we're going to need to access. So we can simply put in and assign this to a variable and the variable it's an enemy controller data type because it has that script on it we'll name this just enemy which we're not using yet so so we get that component once we get that component whoops let's do oh we say if and we want to look at the dash that we've already gotten. And we want to get that property is dash damage on, which means we're dashing. So if that's the case, we want to take the enemy controller off the enemy and we want to run that method called damage enemy which because it's public it recognizes damage enemy is a method that we can use and then in parentheses we need to put the amount uh, for right now we could just put 50 but we could also put the dash dot uh, dash damage on there as well which we'll need to change this so we don't hard code numbers in. And we may want to go ahead and also do a debug.log because we'll want to see how this is running. So we can also just say damage enemy 50. That'll show us that we know that it ran this. And the other thing is 
we want to set the the game object so we can say other dot get component we want to get that box collider that's on the enemy and it's going to be a regular collider but on the enemy what we want to do is do is trigger and turn that to true so that way our player can be able to dash through the enemy because that way the enemy is no longer has collision the enemy is a triggered area that we can just dash through so this will only run if is dash damage is on And we can go ahead and test this to see I like to select our enemy and if we walk up you'll see is trigger did not turn on and every time I walk up my player is losing health I now have 30 health and we'll dash through and it just completely obliterated the enemy let's take a look at our console before we exit so we have we collided with the the enemy collided with the player which means we lose health we lose health we lose health we lose help um, and then it if we we have collapse on but you can see twice it ran the damage enemy 50 two times the enemy has a hundred health so the enemy was destroyed so we have a slight issue with somehow with the is trigger and everything it was wigging out we could set the enemy health for 200 for right now and play test so i was able to hit it So now, on trigger enter, we turn off the, the collider on the enemy to be an is trigger. But that means the enemy's not going to be able to collide with us ever again unless we do something about that. So we're going to grab the on trigger exit method. And on trigger exit again, right? There could be other objects in our level that are triggers, so we want to first say, hey, is this object an enemy that is we're exiting out of the trigger area? And if the object is the enemy, then we want to grab the enemy controller again, so we're just going to copy and paste this here. And we're then going to go back into our enemy which is getting the enemy controller and we're going to run that method that we had made which was called what reset yeah there we go reset trigger off it's a method with parentheses right formatting and then we put our semi colon and we'll save that so now to play test we will select our enemy cube so that we can see here's our box collider is trigger is off we click play and I have the wrong enemy selected. There we go. And you can see the is trigger flashed and then went off. There we go. Now a little challenge for, for you would be now that we've instantiated 
on the enemy, we have the explosion effects instantiated. See if you can put in the uh, hit effects prefab and have those instantiate uh, on collision.